that there. Okay. Alright, let's check this event before it's over. It took me a little while to start it. You know, almost missing already. Okay, let's see it. Okay. Everything's alright. Yeah, everything seems to be working fine. Skyward. Okay, be avoiding most that for a week. Oh, looks like Margaret is talking with those two people over there. Uh, okay. Wait, is that Rosaria? Huh? She's standing next to an adventurer Paimon doesn't recognize. I think she's also here to play some cats. I think she's also here to play some cards. Yeah, most likely being Rosario. Say no more, Valerina. I'll continue to help you out just as Victoria requested. Hmm. Look after the cats, check up on their health, give them a bath. These are all things well within my capabilities. That doesn't solve our biggest problem, though, Miss Rosaria. The cats have been so anxious. If we can't get them to trust us, they're sure to get sick from all the anxiety. We just opened, and the Furball Fortress is already about to go under. Just opened? Well, panicking certainly isn't going to solve the problem. The fact is, neither of us has a way with cats. That's not something I can change. Adventurer? Sounds like you're all really worried about something. Our cat saviors! They've appeared already! Uh, saviors? Uh, seems a bit sudden considering we just met. Where's the owner? Sounds like a title we'll have to live up to. I smell a commission coming. I'll try to keep it short. My name's Valerina, and I really like small animals. Recently, I've been trying to set up a shelter for stray cats. Mm. I call it the Furball Fortress. I thought it would be a good way to rescue those poor animals that have nowhere to go. Plus, getting them off the streets will improve the overall environment and look at the city. It's a win-win. The sisters over at the church heard about my plans and sent over the kindly Miss Rosaria to help. I wouldn't exactly describe myself as kindly. I just accepted the assignment from Victoria. After all, I was the only one with any knowledge of medicine, or the spare time to help. Uh, well, it seems like you've medicine. got quite the plan, Valerina. Thanks for bringing us up to speed. So, what had you so worried just now? Are you short on Mora? Are you missing something you need? No, I've got more than enough Mora. The funds, the location, the supplies, all the various procedures, they've all been settled. The main problem is, um, the cats. They, uh, keep swatting at me. They're always hissing and swatting. They won't let me approach them, not even with treats. <sighs> the cats are afraid of me as well. Makes they run sense. away the minute I'm in the vicinity. Oh, Paimon has heard something like this before. There's something that just makes cats afraid. Huh. A kind-hearted cat rescuer who doesn't get along with cats. Hmm. Seems like just visiting the cat's tail would be enough to leave you flustered, let alone running your own cat shelter. That's why we consulted an expert. But Miss Margaret wasn't able to offer a solution to our problem. She's short on workers, so she couldn't spare anyone to help us either. She did give us one piece of advice, though to enlist the help of the Honorary Knight and their trusty helper in white. Mm. We had just wrapped up our conversation, and the next thing we knew, you two appeared before us like saviors sent by Lord Barbados himself. Well, Paimon's not sure how much Lord Barbados would know about taking care of cats. But that aside, we've never even worked at 
a shelter before, but somehow we've been turned into the saviors of the entire operation! It's perfect time, though, no? We were just talking about playing with cats. Oh yeah, I think she mentioned something. Well, that's true. Even if Paimon has no experience working at a shelter, she's confident she can get on their good side just fine! Like, that's all we need to do here, right? We just need to show Valerina and Rosaria how to get friendly with the cats, and everything else should fall into line! Feel free to focus your efforts on Valerina. Just call me if any of the cats need medical attention. Hmm. Huh. If you all can keep the shelter running with minimal effort on my part... <laughs> this errand might turn out to be a good use of my time after all. It's better than church activities in any case. Ah, so that's why you agreed to help. You just wanted to shirk your church duties. Well, I guess I should show you around first. Follow me, you two. Let's make our way to the Furball Fortress. Yeah, I thought this would be a new paint inside Cat's Tail. Where? Oh, no, wrong button. Oh. This sounds like something that will be permanent. There's no reason to close this after the event. It's just an empty cat stand. Oh! It's just a regular house! Oh, gotta say, Pino oh. was expecting something a little bigger with Fortress in the name and everything. This was the biggest space I could find in the city over the past few weeks. The rent is cheap, so that's a plus. A half a year's worth of rent, along with all the cat's tail inspired furnishings, only cost me a few million mora. Of course, not all of the cats will be staying indefinitely. We plan to offer some of the healthy ones up for adoption. As long as the new future owners prove capable and the cat seems like a good fit, they're welcome to take their new pet back to a loving home. This location is definitely good enough. We could even expand the business one day, and start sheltering stray dogs, foxes, or even squirrels. Oh, uh, there aren't strays. When that day comes, though, I'll probably have to think of a different name. Huh, maybe the... Furball and Friends Fortress would be a better fit. <laughs> I would suggest letting all of this play out first. You still don't know if the customers will even get along with the strays. Huh? Look over there! is staring at us. Oh, it's much. the little white cat. She's super afraid of people. She ran away when we tried to give her a bath. It took us forever to track her down again. She looks so soft and clean, and her fur is so white and fluffy, just like fresh falling snow. Wait, that's perfect! We should call her Snowball! Tofu will also be a good fit. Pudding is in a bad choice here, but Pudding can have other colors. Tofu. Yeah, it's Tofu. Ooh, those are some good names, Traveler. But Paimon thinks she likes Snowball best. Here, kitty, kitty. That's it, Snowball. Good kitty. That's a good kitty. It, it's been, what, a minute? And you already got the cat to listen to you. Did you see that, Miss Rosaria? She's practically a miracle worker. You really are a cat whisperer. Ah, uh, that was nothing. They may be strays, but as long as you give them a good name and call them with love, you're sure to gain their trust eventually. First things first, though. You gotta pay attention to the way you interact with them. Um, how should Paimon put it? Basically, it all comes down to your demeanor. For example, you can't just stand there trembling in fear, Valerina. If you're afraid, the cats are sure to become afraid as well. As for you, Rosaria, you might <laughs> want to keep an eye on your, uh, facial expressions. These poor creatures, picked up off the streets, given a name, and they now have a loving home. It is kind to even the lost souls who have wandered astray. This city really has brought peace and happiness to us all. That sounds weird coming from her. Hey, 
Snowball is snuggling up to Rosaria! Looks like she's not afraid of her anymore. Did Rosaria just... smile? I saw it too. We should pretend like we didn't see anything. It was weird. No matter. There are more important things to focus on. Anyway, it's getting a bit stuffy in here. I hmm? I'm going to go get some air. Call me if you need me. Huh. Paimon thought Rosaria would be happier about that. Please, teach me more of your ways, honorary knight. And you too, oh great cat whisperer. We're sure to get more and more strays coming to the Furball Fortress, and I doubt all of them will be as friendly as Snowball. There's still so much I don't know about interacting with them. No problem, just watch and learn. It's about time we move on to a more advanced lesson. How to get the cats not to just trust you, but to like you. It's all about patience. As long as you put in the effort to get to know them, you'll become best friends in no time! Yeah, but that takes a I while. I completely understand. For an the Furball Fortress is still in its trial phase. So, the more I can learn at this stage, the better. Okay, what are we... You must take various requirements into consideration when setting up the Fluffy Fellini home. There are three attributes in this event, confidence, durability, and aesthetics, um, because they'll break things down, so durability. You're required to select one suitable furnishing of each type in such a way that the overall area fits the three attributes requirements. Exactly no more and no less. Why no more? Would it be nice to have more of any? The icon of the furnishings primary attribute will be displayed in the upper left corner of the interface. In addition to the main attribute, it will also provide a small amount of the other attributes. There is only one unique combination of furnishings that furnishes the attributes needed to complete the challenge. Huh. That doesn't give room for creativity. And the furnishing comprises the combination have appearances that complement each other the best. After you have completed your fluffy home setup, you can place food into the cat's football uh, to be acknowledged by them. After you have fed the cat, you can call the corresponding cat to the throne of Mjolnir or Mjolnir or invite it to play directly. Mm. <coughs> Is that throne? On our night, uh, catch Whisper Paimon, are you too tired? Would you like something to eat or drink, or perhaps a massage to relax your muscles? Uh, never mind that for now, let's talk business. Uh, that's right, it can have been cheap setting up this verbal fortress, even Paimon knows that. Uh, if there's a problem with the finances, don't hesitate to let us know and we'll figure something out. Uh, so that's what you're concerned about, well, we're not in Nothing to worry about as far as more is concerned. My parents are both merchants, not super rich, but they do support me with operational funds each month, so running the fortress is no big deal at all. So what's the point of you being an adventurer? Uh, this isn't relevant at all to the situation. I may look like steep risk could blow me away, but I, I was the real solver in my adventuring team back when I was with the Adventurers Guild. Are you not anymore? Quite often my entire team relied on my intelligence to overcome the strange mechanisms in the ruins and get us to the treasure. That's to say, I didn't, I didn't come cheap if anyone wanted to hire me as a freelance adventurer. I used to take on quite a bit of work too, sometimes I even complete over 10 missions in a month. Well, we do 4 a day. In fact, the more I earned on my own has surpassed the operational funds my parents provided me with. At this point, I have enough to handle my daily expense for a lifetime and then some. I didn't really have any hobbies, so and now the money that was just sitting in my savings is being used to help cats today and tomorrow. It might be it might help more animals too. That works out just as it should, don't you think? Oh, you are certainly wealthy beyond Paimon's expectations. Hang on, 
What do you mean that works out just as it should? Well, how should I put this? I've been part of many adventure teams in my time, and I've dealt with all sorts of animal loving people with pets. I also met some compassionate souls asking others, and even the knights of Favonius or the church to adopt stray cat animals. This while they themselves don't have any money beyond that needed to support themselves. The, some good souls with the means, on the other hand, need enough more to take care of one or two stray cats. They're good role models. I mean, it's good to have sympathy, but I don't really th like asking others to do things that they, well, aren't even respons responsible for in the first place, you know? Just because of your own feelings. Well, what's wrong with they helping with stray cats? They aren't your responsibility either, but you are taking the job for yourself. That's why solving this problem is a job for someone who's both willing and rich like me. I'll pay and I'll do my part. Of course, I'll stop bothering uh, you two and Miss Rosaria once I've learned how to get along with cats. Uh, you know what, Valerina? That's kinda cool. Perman didn't know that you had this side to you. We didn't know her. Those stray cats are real lucky to have met someone like you. Perman sure hopes that the verbal partners will help more cats in the future. Well done indeed, a commendable spirit. Uh, such a wonderful praise from the earlier night in Cat, cat Whisperer Paimon. Now I'm getting really pumped up again. I'll keep working at it. I will learn how to communicate with cats and manage the fortress as best as I can. Uh, food and drinks. Uh, did you set up a kitchen here, Valerina? Paimon hasn't seen one. And what about the chef? Or are you gonna set up to the plate, step up to the plate. As you can see, this while well, this place isn't officially open yet, some guests still stay here for long periods of time, and I wouldn't say making them go out and buy food and drinks themselves is the ideal situation. As such, I've set up things with Sarah at Good Hunter so that if our guests have requests for takeout, they can leave them with me, then Miss Rosario or I will put the order in at Good Hunter. I'm not running this place to make a profit, so the price for ordering takeout will be the same as getting it straight from the restaurant. Wait, you're not even charging them for the delivery fee? I'm sure I guess will be thrilled to be able to enjoy delicious food at the original price while playing with cats. Right? Even you think it's a great idea, don't you, Cat Whisper? Once the fortress officially opens, this can be done. This can be one of its selling points. The more people we attract, the more likely the cats are to find a suitable owner. Once the number of visitors in the rate at which I adopt cats reach a nice balance, I'll consider expanding the scale of our operations. Once that happens, we'll be able to add a management area in areas in which other stray animals can be adopted. So that's an issue I'll have to plan out in the future, just leave the business operation and data gathering to me. Don't sweat that stuff. Alright. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, can I place both? Oh no, it's just accessories. It is almost there. Durability. Uh, more durability. And aesthetics. Okay, so that wasn't good enough. Switch uh, this to durability. Oh, or I can just... Yeah, I could just look at stuff, but I'm not sure how... I'll find the right balance here. Do I need them all? Or can I skip one or other? Uh... Okay. Yeah, I don't fully see how they, they don't look odd together, but I mean, it's not like this one doesn't match either. Yeah, they may be part of sets that we have at home and I never really pay attention. Minor assessor. Uh, 
Ah, the fallen sisters may be served for your feeling home needs. Tea time refreshments. Uh, comforting melody. Luck break. Overflowing bookshelf. But then you just gave me the answer. Okay, I got it before, but... You just gives me, give me the answer like that? Maybe because the first one. What's the other option? Shoot. No? Let's see, like, place it in there. Maybe it's because it's there already. Fish, obviously. Snow white ball, pure white cotton. Oh. We're done? Or a play? Hmm, you can select a cat for the throne of Meower. Or directly invite a cat to come and play. The cat's friendship level are as follows trusted, church inseparable. But then we have to part ways with it afterwards. Uh, the eight points <laughs> where you can pet the cat are the right ear, left ear, face, lower body, upper body, tail, right paw, left paw. Different cats have their own purposes for where they wish to be petted. Press in order to pet the cat, if you pet right where the cat likes it, its friendliness to you will increase, but this value will remain the same or even decrease should you pet a spot it displeased the feeling. Um, but pet dogs or I mean, cats on the street, we can't yet. Repeatedly petting the same part of the cat causes friendliness to increase by less and less until it no longer increases at all. Uh, as such, you must adjust your approach and pet the cat in different spots. After you have switched up to switch up the places you are petting in a certain number of times, this cat's rate of friendliness will increase will reset across all body parts it likes to be petted. Uh, once a cat's friendship level has increased, the next stage areas where it did not enjoy being petted may change, mm, and it may not permit you to pet in new places. Is our key observation and get along with them now. But will we also change the ones it liked? Oh. Huh. That was the head or that was no. Better you. The ball. They got gameplay tutorial. The first one. No. Eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They, they don't usually like the. Oh, it's furry. Yeah. This isn't as cool as I thought it would be. Okay. So it's like everywhere now. Okay. Java session's been playing. Oh, work. Meow. Uh, is this really how cats greet one another? I wonder if my pronunciation is on point. Meow. Looks like Snowball didn't understand even a whisker. What are you trying to speak cat? Professor Majestus. That is not how you pronounce it. Try roaring like roar. That's not how you pronounce it. Hey, roar sounds more like tigers or lions. Uh, that's a good way to frighten a kitty and turn into a scaredy cat. 
Ingenus Paimon, so the rumors were true, you really are working at the Furball Fortress. Working probably isn't the best, isn't the right word. We are helping Valerina and Rosaya out, so we are more like consultants. Yeah, that's it. We call a consultant sounds like, sounds really impressive. By the way, great astrologer Mona, are you looking to adopt a cat or to assist you in your astronomical observations? Based on my understanding of astrology, it shouldn't be too hard to teach a cat to read the various aspects of the stars. It might even teach I might even teach one to help me write manuscripts. Still a big snowball. Bono is stare straight as snowball. Meow. Uh, on seven thought, maybe not. One who can only read the stars but is ill versed and uh, string words together would not suffice to convey my illuminating insights. If I really need an assistant, it would be better to just take a trip to Fontaine and recruit some staff member from the Steambird or find a Melusin who can use a typewriter and bring them back to Mondstadt. Were I to really adopt a cat, at most it would be uh, to play with it a bit, uh, to relax and relieve stress from the exhaustion of academic inquiry. One mustn't be a bell owner, when you get tired, it would be best if the cat is tired enough for a cat nap as well. Before I set foot in here, never imagine hanging out with cats would be such a joy. Uh, how wonderful life would be if you could always be happy like this. Uh, looks like you're going to be really cons conscientious owner. Yes, this cat's gonna be in fine hands. Oh, but I've also heard that some cats can be quite rambunctious, always jumping around, biting and clawing the furniture. Imagine my manuscripts or astrology tomes written by Feline Canines. That'd be troublesome indeed. Uh, making a snack out of a precious book, Paimon can barely imagine something so terrifying. Snowball looks quite well behaved but seems not to comprehend my meaning. Perhaps we lack that special connection. So I would like to observe it a bit more, you know, keep an eye out for obedient cats. Oh, and I must calculate the cost of a cat bed, cat food and other expenses. Not too luxurious, but also not too shabby. Wouldn't do to submit a cat to hardship. Uh, it's okay, take your time. There are many more fur flames at Fortress, aren't there? Yeah, Valerina said that she will adopt even more strays in the future, so even if no catch, Cats catch your eye today, you can always come back and often to play and have a look. You know? Okay, so this was indefinite the shoot thing. Uh, but there is another cat there. Yeah. Let's just see, this will just give me the answer. Ah, too early for hint. Okay. Okay, the past already. Aesthetics. Aesthetics. Durability. More durability. That was easy. Yeah, this one fits a bit better. Hmm. Uh, play cat at your feet. Always fish. Gray and white cat jazz while wrapped sitting up. Where did this cat came from? Can I just... Oh, she's back there. Ah, inseparable, trusted it. Ah, I complete the previous one. Okay. Uh, not play with the cats, or do you have a takeout order for me to take care of? What do you think of this job? You don't seem to play with cats much. Do you find this boring? It's alright, boring and interesting are relative. I don't anticipate any major incidents or accidents occurring here. It's a very ordinary job, a little different from staying at the church. Mm, no, there are some differences. Some of the cats are very clever and they understand me just fine. I find interacting with them interesting enough. And even though Valerina is quite similar to Victoria in the way she finds things for me to do, 
they do have very different ways of doing things. It's a fresh experience, I suppose. And that in itself is new. It's not a bad thing. No, that's great. One thing is you're, you get along pretty well with Valerina in the cast, really. You do indeed get along well. You'll be great buddies for sure. Thank you, and I hope you things stay the way. What's the other? Uh, which cat do you like the most? I'm just curious too. Have you ever found a cat you like to get close to or wanted to take good care of? Uh, that's rather sudden, but I suppose it's natural for people to be curious about things like that. I would say no. Wow, that was quick. That's a surprise, I knew it. Different people have their own definitions of the word like. To me, right now, there's no living being or object I think of in those terms. That said, it's about the same for things I dislike. Huh? Shit. My willingness really should care for the cat, these cats, to spend my time on them is because it's my job. Or should I say that it's a problem for me that requires little effort on my part, so, so why not? If nothing else, these jobs presented with me with some pleasant surprises, I consider that good enough. Mm, I didn't really get that, but sounds positive. Don't worry, I didn't get it either. Uh, no worries, I understand Rosario for the both of us. Don't overthink it, it's like, it's like a blessed lake most of the time, you just need to get used to it. And if you can't, I'm sure someone of your ability can change all you see before you. Good luck in a way. That was optimist. Okay, just same thing. It hasn't so far, but it seems it would be a bit weird for it to like to scratch one ear but not the other. I don't even need, even need to think of a new place, do I? I'll just be risking get a delay on him not liking it. Yeah. Uh, anyway. I think this one fits better with Mona. Meow meow meow. They all trash talk too. Uh both Bunny and Amber. Ah, uh, but this was called Bunny. They have a point. Uh so that's it. I'm also still observation. I'm be lost. Actually, Paimon doesn't really get it either, but she can tell that Amber and Bunny have reached an understanding. I can ask Paimon, you're here. I was just thinking about going to look for you. Uh, I've already heard all about how you are helping Valerina with the Furball Fortress. That's the easy Paimon for you. The second you're back in Mostad, you're already being such a huge help. I, the Honor Knight, will fulfill my mission no matter its nature. The defense of the cats of Mostad is one of my main responsibilities. Speaking of which, what were you and Bunny discussing just now? You seem to be having a really fun conversation. Meow meow meow. I was just asking Bunny about the weather and whether or not it would rain. Do cats know that kind of thing? Uh, Lisa saying something about that. According to a book she read, cats are very sensitive to humidity and don't like the feeling of being wet. So, if they notice a sudden increase in the humidity, they will start nervously pawing their faces and licking their fur. Once a cat does something like that, it's a sign that a large rainstorm is likely on its way. Oh, well, I had no idea, that's so cool. I guess you just learned something amazing by accident. Yeah, I don't think that's true. And in that case, you know, let's pay more attention to cats during our travels. That way we won't keep getting soaked by huge downpours from uh, those big black clouds. I suppose I should pay more attention going forward. Since when haven't I paid close attention to cute kitties? 
I originally came here to ask Valerina about something. But just as I was talking to her, this little kid snuggled up close to me and yawned so loudly. It was just too cute. Since she was so affectionate towards me, then, well, then I need to show how friendly I am too. And that's when I remember what Lisa told me, so I went ahead and asked Bunny about the weather. But she responded by rubbing her face, then wagging her tail. Uh, then lying on the ground snuggling against my hands. So, is, this actually go is it actually going to rain or not over the next few days? That's precisely theirs. Oh, this fits better with the other one. Uh, that's more confidence, less static, too much durability, more confidence. Huh. Yeah, I don't quite get it. Okay, that box kind of suits that, but this one fits better. Exactly. Uh, only one in the combination, and the furnishes that comprise the combination have appearance that complement each other the best. Yeah, I would say so. Sure, happen, but it's more smoky clouds. Okay. Be something more constant, and I have to keep going around while that moves. he see anymore. That's ball. It's you, me talking. Me, I'm talking. Talking razor. Uh, are you talking to this ball? Meow, meow, meow. This is like this ball is trying to say, that's right. Familiar saint looking for friends. Is good, happy. Friends follow the saint. You came too happy. On your body, they smell of wind and rain. Very familiar, the scent of cats, also familiar. Come on, very sweet scent, you smell good. Uh, sweet, could, could that be the flavor of the pancakes we already gave us? Uh, did Paimon eat that many? Maybe you have my portion, remember? You didn't eat. No sweat, you can still eat triple what you ate before, or portion. Really, Paimon didn't even notice. Uh, it's all the pancakes fault for being so delicious. Uh, and Paimon also wants to eat sweet madams, steaks, and hash browns. Oh, and drink some apple cider. Uh, okay, that's the menu for next meal then. Come on, let's go place our order, Valerina. You come too, Razor. 
Thank, thank you. This ball has brought me lots of nuts. Uh, meat boxes. I'm very full. Sounds like very in order delivery then. Did this ball deliver the good to you? The food to you, Razor? Meow, meow, meow. But I would never imagine that the cats would actually end up taking care of the customer here in the Furball Fortress. Looks like you really are the cat's meow, huh, Razor? No? Coffee, durability, aesthetics, or aesthetics, almost. Oh. Huh. No, let me pay attention. Yeah, this one doesn't seem anything. Now we'll be weird. Okay, this ends up swimming both. Yeah, I don't quite get it. It's just trying hour to get it right. Yeah, I don't seem to be doing much in this event. Doesn't like the face. Oh no, it didn't like the pack, did it? No, I guess it did. It didn't add any new parts. Okay, we're done. Mm, oh, so this is the rumored sacred land that people named the Furball Fortress. And yet, it is furnished in such a prosaic manner. Shabby, one might even call it. Truly a few swings woven from the vines of purple agate grapes may be built. Pure silver lamps mounted with candles made of absolute sea salt. Uh, all the better to light the cat feeding planters uh, with the motives of nightborn stars. And yes, statues forged in the image of cat familiars by melting the venerable carnage of lost dynasties and adorning them with strange pearls and dewdrops from depths of the fjord. Surely this would make for a memorable choice? You surely must agree, do you not, dear familiar? Mm, do you have yet to declare your name to your princessing? Think on that, then, and know that it shall be your utmost honor to be known to her. Dope. Yeah. His name is Dope, he's still processing. Dope isn't the brightest, and he can't really understand or appreciate your exquisite choice of words. Uh, please show him clemency, processing. Uh, hey, wait, no, that's not right. Why does Paimo is getting like this whenever she sees Fisher? Nothing wrong with that, let me give it a word too. I, the great cat conjurer, sincerely pay my humble respects. 
Huh, as I anticipated, Cash Conjurers, though, have once more been brought before our August person by the weaving of the threads of fate. This is a most pleasant, re pleasant reunion. What a title. Uh, looks like Fischl heard about us from Valerina. By your console, much thought have I given of late within Imrenax right to realize the, the ingenuities obtained from prior experiences. And I had decided to select the most sagacious and sensible of cat familiars to accompany my eminent person on my soldier. soldier. Uh, yeah. Oh, so we were planning to take care of a cat, for sure. Well, understandable, most people want to have their own after seeing just how adorable they are. The official, don't you really have us? Uh, the two of you tend to move really fast, can a cat keep up? They don't need to take the cat on adventures. They live safe at home. Or are you gonna have us fly while carrying the cat? That'll be interesting. Hmm, I the princess in the room, the Huntelung. Uh, often, to, often traverse 3,000 universes. Though such a journey may not be long, having more suitable companions and gaining insight into things is into things easily overlooked. That really wouldn't hurt. I also would like to have a cat familiar to play, uh, uh, to join forces with, to guarantee that my mood shall shine bright as moonlight every second of every day. Yet, it is a shame that though Oz went to great pains to dawn a form that sets most of it is, he could not diminish, diminish his maj majesty fully, and could not approach the cat familiars. Whenever their Oz gets within 5 paces of a cat familiar, their fur shall inadvertently stand on the land and inflate like a bloody floating room of war. And any closer, a terror overtakes them, and they flee for the hills. I thought they would actually attack us, thinking it's a pigeon or something. The animal archons devoted and loyal gnomes recommended that us repose without. Uh, and as their advice was sound, I graciously assented. Majesty, oh right, Primo gets it. You mean that us body has so much electrical energy that the second he enters the furball fortress, all the feeling fur gets electrified. Electrify it, right? But if that's true, the how could a cat ever travel with you, Fischl? If only there was some material in Tevat that could block the effects of Electro. They don't have rubber. Well, there is wood. Then we could make cat's clothes out of that material, and then a cat could travel with you and us. No problem. Meow. Give me. Give it to me first. Those electrical slimes will be no match once I had done this panoply of war. But now that I know things about it, elemental power is super duper mega strong. If there was a material that could just easily resist something as powerful as the elements, that would be too good to be true. We probably shouldn't stand around the dreaming. Ah, the naivete. Do not jump to judge a cat's familiars. Talents through common sense, the cement resources of mere mortal word struggle to accurately convey their properties. Perhaps something, perhaps somewhere in this world, there exists a cat familiar that can dive deep into the depths, endure an inferno, and ride upon the wind. Such a special entity would surely have no fear of thunder or lightning. As long as I am patient in my search, I shall find it. Forsooth, uh, even if I should seek for ten years or a hundred, it shall be but a fleeting instant in the Imrenax right. Additionally, the devotion to one's development in life is as important as the innate nature one is born with. As it is doubly has immense potential, perhaps after joining my retinue for a spell, we become all the more familiar with the power of Electro. By happenstance, I and the Princessing have disentangled a million mirrored manual affairs, thus allowing myself a tincture of time to spare. Perhaps then it shall not hurt, endeavoring to stay here and familiarize myself with these cat familiars, particularly this puppy. 
you know? Yeah, the implementable hope is you'll have fun here in the Fort Purple Fortress Fischl. Yeah, as always, Fischl talks too much. Not here? Huh? Nothing here? <laughs> Okay. Oh. Uh, I finish finish. Okay, but where is the last one? Was it alongside here? No. Uh, where? No, don't tell me it isn't open yet. No, it is. Okay. Uh, Snowball's warm little den. When is hoping home? The small relaxing room. The Pisfinta's paradise. Bull fruit huge interloper. Ah, oh, wait. Okay. Ah, uh, to the next day. should probably give him some space. Get too close and all that swatting might catch you in the face. Oh no, seems like Valerina has run into some more cat-sized trouble. Uh, looks like Shudder has a new stray. There's something almost dignified about him. Honorary Knight! Cat Whisperer! This big cat just barged in here after Snowball! He must have spotted her when she went out for a walk and followed her all the way back here! Easy, easy. No one's going to hurt you here. All those evil things, all those bad people who forced you to do whatever it took to survive, they can't find you here. You're safe within these walls. It's larger than the others. You're surrounded right? by good people now. Their constant hovering might get a little annoying, but it's all for your own good. Just relax. A life of leisure isn't a bad thing, you know. You just have to get used to it. Yeah, big ferocious cat, so I think it is larger. He understood all that? Looks like it worked. <laughs> Smart cat. Whoa, this cat is way bigger than the others. His coloring looks like fresh squeezed buell fruit juice. And he's wearing a scarf too! Huh? Looks like there's some sort of design on it. Oh, it's the symbol of the Knights of Avonius! So, he deserves a name that's for a knight then. Owner. Uh, do they have the Arthur myth here to make the connection with Lancelot? You really do have a way with cats. He looks way more at ease now. Paimon thinks you deserve to take the credit this time. Sir Pancelot seemed to calm down right after everything you said to him. You're getting much better with them, Rosaria. Hopefully you, you're finding this gig a bit more fun too. It doesn't matter to me either way. Although... The fact that they're cute doesn't hurt. Let Paimon show you how to put Sir Pouncelot completely at ease. Paimon just needs to work a bit more of her magic and he'll be as happy as can be. This doesn't look like a stray. You should have an owner. A knight owner. Same thing. It's here already. Hmm. <coughs> okay. 
they more confidence. How's them more comfortable than that? Too much durability. Oh, I got nothing there. No. Okay. Doesn't seem to be much to wear doing here. Let's get on meow. Okay, so. Wait. Huh? I didn't notice those fishes before. Like the face or the ears. Come on. Be Rosario. Oh, no, Aww, that's a good kitty, Sir Pouncelot. You better be on your best behavior from now on, okay? Don't go causing trouble now. <laughs> I'm a nosy, you're a sweet, happy little cat. You'll get along with everyone just fine. He's so adorable. I just want to scratch his head and pinch his little cheeks. He does have a certain endearing quality about him. When he's not causing trouble, that is. Hmm. I wonder how he got that injury around his eye. The traces of restorative potion indicate that Sir Pouncelot should be in the vicinity. That was actually his name? Huh? Oh, it's the Traveler Paimon and Sister Rosaria. And you must be an adventurer. I don't believe we've met. It appears Sir Pouncelot has taken quite the liking to you. Albedo! It's been such a long time! It's super great to see you! Uh, but are you sure you're in the right place? I'm assuming the captain of the investigation team is here for some important reason? C-Captain? He's a captain of the Knights of Favonius. An important officer just showed up without warning. And I don't even have any refreshments or snacks to offer. Please, kind of allow me to explain, sir. I assure you, this shelter is operating under a legitimate business license. All proper procedures have been followed. Mm, assuming that Albedo has arrived to investigate her business, Valerina frankly searches for the relevant documents so while explaining the purpose of the shelter. Valerina appears intimidated by the identity of the visitor, unaware that the investigation team doesn't handle such inspections. There's no need to worry. 
I was simply in the area helping my team address a small issue. Namely, the location of this cat right here. Not too long ago, Interim Team Feline Treatment Case Number 3, Sir Pouncelot, knocked out the weapons officer who was watching over him. He then fled and disappeared into the city. We knew we had to recover him as fast as possible. The cat belongs to the investigation team, and even bears the insignia of the Knights of Avonius. If he were to wreak havoc across the city, well, that would hardly be a welcome result for any party involved. So he actually belongs to the investigation team. That would explain the Knights of Avonius symbol. Well, that doesn't explain how Paimon just came up with his actual name. You're saying Sir Pouncelot is capable of knocking out a knight? And what's with all those official sounding titles you added to his name? Interim treatment case something or other? Is there something else you're not telling us? Uh, well, I suppose I should explain. Two months ago, Sir Pouncelot got lost in the wild and accidentally ingested Whopper Flower Nectar. Due to certain effects that are not entirely understood as of yet, the nectar caused him to triple in size. Rose, take this stuff. Even regular sized cats can get pretty bold when they're upset. A cat triple the size? Oh, Paimon bets even a hilly churl wouldn't be enough to scare off a cat like that. So that's what happened. No wonder he was so anxious. For cats, or really any animal that lives in the wild, a larger size doesn't exactly confer many advantages. What it actually does is make their appearance more noticeable and their movements less nimble. Which in turn means living in perpetual danger of exposing themselves to attacks from predators. In other words, it means living in a constant state of fear. But this isn't a wild exactly. animal. When Sir Pouncelot stumbled upon our encampment, he looked quite worse for wear. His entire body was riddled with scars, and he appeared exceptionally anxious. Uh. That's awful. I guess he had a good reason for all that swatting earlier then. If all that had happened to me, I would be afraid of new people and strange animals too. You don't need to worry too much. The problem has already been solved. I administered a restorative potion to eliminate the alchemical effects of the Whopper Flower Nectar and help him return to a normal size. Although he still might appear a bit larger than the average cat, his current size at least should pose no more threat to his quality of life. While in our care, various knights have been taking turns watching over him. In light of his feisty demeanor, Klee decided to call him Sir Pouncelot. We all thought it was quite fitting. We even made him that little scarf as a testament to his time among our ranks. Hmm. Whoa! Klee and Paimo were totally on the same wavelength with this one! We thought of the exact same name! Great minds really do think alike! Yeah. <laughs> the maple age of both. Sir Pouncelot's extreme level of anxiety and caution around people may be a result of residual trauma from the time of his transformation. You could say he was less than friendly towards the weapons and signals officers on our team. Klee wasn't around that much to entertain him either. However, it appears Sir Pouncelot has taken quite the liking to you. The knights on my team would never have imagined that he could warm up to people like this. <laughs> well, they are our dear cat saviors after all. The famed honorary knight and Paimon the Cat Whisperer. No matter how feisty or frightening the cat, after a few minutes with the Traveler and Paimon, they'll be as sweet as can be. If that's the case, then I have a question for you both. Would you be willing to adopt Sir Pouncelot? Wait, really? But doesn't he belong to your team? Well, we did take him in, but it was simply out of necessity. We were always planning to find him a permanent home after his condition became more stable. The investigation team is no place for a pet. We are a combat unit after all. Investigation. Any night he got close to would have to go on assignment eventually. It's hardly appropriate to just leave him at camp. And bringing him on our missions would only frighten him further. 
all good points. He's been through quite the ordeal already. For a creature like that, it's best to keep him away from potential triggers. That way he can slowly recover in peace. Hmm... We could set up a nice cozy little home for him in the Serena Teapot. It has everything he could want! And most importantly, no monsters. That's cool, but wouldn't make more sense lore-wise for Rosaria to take him. Great, welcome to the family, Sir Ponsalot. Awesome. You got a new home now, Sir Ponsalot. Thank you so much, Albedo! Oh, no need to thank me. If you find yourselves with some time on your hands, maybe you can bring him by the encampment sometime. I'm sure my fellow knights would love a chance to see his calmer side. I can't believe I got to witness such a special moment! I do believe this counts as the Furball Fortress's first successful adoption! And none of the others actually got. Hey, my veil is not a handkerchief. It appears you enjoy interacting with small animals, Sister Rosaria. I she did that. I must admit, I find that a bit surprising. Paimon can also sense that you're an animal lover, Rosaria. You definitely have a way with cats. You just haven't realized it yet. After all, it's not a side of you that comes out very often. Snowball warmed up to you right from the start, and you were the one that helped Sir Pantalot calm down back there. Oh, uh, I didn't really do anything, though. I was just there. What is she having uh, trouble for? I've got it. I've learned so many useful tips from our dear cat saviors recently. I've decided to extend the shelter's trial period for a bit in order to go over what I've learned. With some effort, I hope I can be a Cat Whisperer too one day. For now though, I'll settle for Cat Whisperer... in training. <laughs> when I open for good, what do you say we run the shelter together, Miss Rosaria? With the two of us, we could rescue every stray in Mondstadt! Hmm, the sister and the whisperer working together! Almost sounds like it was meant to be! <laughs> oh, well, this errand hasn't proved to be too troublesome. It's light on work and stress. I suppose I wouldn't be opposed to your suggestion. I don't know much about rescuing stray animals, but this seems to be quite the milestone. Allow me to offer my congratulations. If my fellow knights run into any strays, I'll be sure to tell them to send them your way. Thank you, thank you, thank you! I really can't thank you all enough for your support! Don't worry, there's a generous reward in store for each and every one of you! The trial phase of the Furball Fortress could not have been more successful! When we open for good, you all simply must come to the opening ceremony. We'll cut the ribbon together. Now that's what Paimon calls a successful commission. Rewarding in more ways than one. Mora, a sense of accomplishment, and of course, our special friend Sir Pamsalot. Talk about a win-win-win. Paimon can't wait for the Furball Fortress to open for good. I think this will take a while still. Maybe another event. But when it is open for good, we will be able to come back here. Whatever. Do you guys, uh, guys have anything else? Well, I do find. No. Inspiration. Uh, no, talk to me later. What did you say? Oh, I do find inspiration sometimes when I play with the cats. But as I do, I find my motivation to ride winning. On the other end, you're always raring to go every time I see you. It's almost as if you're simply inexhaustible. Although we're not workaholics either. Yeah, we're always traveling, so we don't do too much exhausting work. But when I dropped by the Steam Bird before to take care of some things, I noticed an editor complaining. Oh, come on, I clicked that. No, what did you say? Come on, there's too much, I don't know. Oh, there's too much talk. Another Pox, and... Oh, I dropped by the before to take care of some things. Notice an editor complaining mountains of no 
compiling mountains of notes. Hundreds were related to a blonde traveler, destroying the puffer fruit floating here and there, defeating monsters and bandits up and down the land, escorting masterless cargo through dangerous areas. There are too many cargoes in Fontaine. Uh, and every seven days, taking care of commissions from ordinary citizens, uh, sometimes completing dangerous bounties. Your weekly workload is practically 14 to 70 times that of, one of some elite adventurers. Some people even ask for star readings to predict when you arrive just so they can hire you. Uh, so we are actually that hard working and popular. If you could apply the same industriousness to helping me write articles, I mean, I will provide a detailed summary in the underlying theoretical basis, and you just help me put it to paper. We could probably publish hundreds of papers in a year. No, we'd be able to publish a slew of books with tons of time to spare. Great, and what would my cut be? My handwriting isn't exactly the prettiest. Ah, but come on, they ha must have some printing process. They have type of writers. Uh, but I'm not sure you get paid all that much for your writing anyway. Would there be enough left if we split the proceeds? We split it down the middle regardless of the amount, of course. We might brains in your tireless toil. Uh, it would be a completely fair arrangement. The more we write, the more we sell and the greater the reach the ship. The income will naturally grow substantially. Oh, I prepared a whole bunch of pieces, uh, so many that I now run out of material even if I proceeded at an ideal pace for several years. Uh, I will eager that plenty of those articles will end up being cited and utilized by the academic community, and oh, those licensing fees will be glorious. Anyway, if you're willing, then we can discuss some the details once we, I finish preparations. Who knows, perhaps we'll become an ace astrology arrangement with the highest proportion of thesis contributions. Can't you just use astrologists to see if that would actually happen or not, so we don't go in blind? Uh, are the manuscripts being difficult lately? Difficult is not the phrase I use, not ideal in quantity perhaps. So, the results of my astrological observations are crystal clear, and my mind is equally sure about how you want to convey them, I just can't put quill to paper. They don't have pens. No, they should have. Uh, they have quite some technology, they should have pens. Uh, if I were to put out something wishy-washy under these circumstances, the quality would not be worthy of the name Monomagistus, the astrologist. Uh, so, it's not just burnout, but the high expectations you have of yourself. Yes, and it was at such a moment that I happened to hear about the trial opening of the Verbal Fortress, and thought I'd come and try relaxing a bit here. You know, get myself back in the right state of mind. But after playing with cat, the cats, I found I was too relaxed, while the study of the stars in pen and papers requires a certain seriousness. That's totally normal. Uh, maybe you just haven't played enough. If you cut playtime short and force yourself to work, it's not surprise that you won't be able to focus. Just don't think about anything. Empty your head completely and just take a nap when you're tired yourself from yourself out from playing. You'll definitely be full of energy and enthusiasm the next day. That would be the ideal anyway. What if you still just want to have fun? You do have a point. Paimon, which does fit with another possibility, which is that the current curse of fate has yet to come into contact with some key factor. Deadlines are, deadlines are fixed, but they suited to important work are flexible. We must wait for the crucial sign. But for now, I shall follow your advice and stop thinking. I'll continue enjoying myself here in the Furball Fortress. Oh no, the sign that I should pick up my pen. Now she's a pen. Just might come tomorrow. Thanks, Zeus, and you too, Paimon. Hey, you two are doing such a great job managing this place, and I imagine you'd be so good at this too. As long as you're enjoying yourself, Amber. 
That's right, Valerina also orders food from Guru Hunter, so Amber, you can stay here and play when you are on vacation. Oh, speaking of work, I uh, have finished all the recent missions, Amber. Uh, when you were asking Bunny about the weather, was it because you have to go out on gliding patrol soon? Relax, no need to worry. I won't be going out on patrol today, I was just asking Bunny about the weather to make conversation, that's all. I'm here today for two reasons. First, to satisfy my own curiosity. And second, to help a friend. I have a friend who is very skilled at making handcrafts. And used to make all kinds of toys for kitties and doggies. doggies. And the furnishings at Cat's Tale were made by her. After I heard about the fortress. Herbal Fortress, she contacted Valerina and supplied some furniture and toys. The very same ones you see here, in fact. What I did imagine was that Valerina couldn't bear to accept donations and insisted on paying her. Now that the fortress is a few days into its trial opening, the friend wants to understand whether or not the cats like her toys. But she doesn't really have time, so she doesn't understand cats very well either. Who is she talking about? It wouldn't be you, would. I don't think you'd be Collie either. So here I am to conduct an on the spot inspection, and the results are in full marks. Uh, if even the person making cat toys can communicate with them, how do you manage it, Amber? Natural talent? You've practiced with Baron Bunny? I don't know either, maybe you're right, Agnes. Though, still both sound like good reasons, but maybe there's another, and that's my duty as an outrider. Outriders are different from scouts, who need to both quickly obtain intelligence on the enemy, but also strike fast. Outriders need to do their best to stay out of sight and use every means at their disposal to get intel. Sometimes the chirping of birds, the bouncing of squirrels, and the grunting of boars can tell me what I need to know about monsters. If I'm lucky, animals that are familiar with me will come up and warn me of monsters of their own accord when they see me in the areas I often patrol. Whether they do it by chirping, bouncing, or grunting, they all mean pretty much the same thing. Who is scary? There's bad guys over there. Compared to those sensitive wild animals, the cats outside are really easy to communicate with. And uh, never mind the super well behaved little kitties in the Furball Fortress. I will never imagine the, the outriders will have to master skills like those. If it was Pymer, she'd probably get dizzy just trying to listen for a little while. Oh, it's not some essential skill, it's just something I pick it up from my experiences. For an outrider, the most important skill to master is using a white glider. Really? Oh. But then she wouldn't do much, she's just gliding around. Oh, on that note, I oh, just now I noticed he's looking here. <laughs> on that note, Inus, uh, your wing glider skills. Haven't gotten rusty in your long absence from Monster, have they? Would you like to test my personally instruction, instructor Amber? My gliding skills soar upward by the second. Test me. Now that's the spirit, that's what I like to see. Next time we meet, I'll be sure to give you a real test. For real? I kinda doubt. If your skills really are even sharper than before, then I'll personally make you some sticky honey rolls. Yay, Amber Sticky Honey Roast. Let's find a time to practice a bit more soon, you know. We've got to make sure you can back up both, back your boss up. Okay, well, there's another one in there. What kind of cats do you like, Amber? Me? I'm not really sure myself. Each cat's cute in its own way, so it's really hard to compare. That's true for color, build, for patterns, eyes, ears. There are combinations of characteristics beyond count. If Paimon had to choose, she wouldn't be able to pick either. So, when you put it that way, I don't think I've ever seen a red cat. A red cat, a part of kitty. If they really, if they really were red cats, Paimon, what about the thing that is with 
uh, Gami. I'm not sure if that's a dog, a, a cat, or a lion. Paimon bets the bets they'd be super energetic and wreck the whole house if they got upset. Well, the vet's a big place. You can find all manner of amazing, mysterious things here. Just think about it. There are slimes of all different elements and colors, so maybe there are cats of all sorts of fantastic exotic colors. Some place we've never heard of. Yeah, you know, the Grand Master is really experienced and knowledgeable, so maybe he's seen some during his travels. Once he comes back, let's find an opportunity to sit down and talk together. We can ask him then. That would be a priority to talk here with some red cats. Sing Lupico, I am happy. Razor, do you are you acquainted with a this ball? He sleeps outside the wall, takes me there very comfy. It has uh, many friends, many outside city starving. Inside the city there's food, me hunting. There's food. Oh, so you already made friends with us ball outside the city. Sounds like you two have quite a few friends out there. Then they deliver the food out of their print out to their friends outside. Why don't those little cats just come inside the city? Sure the walls might be a little high, but there's shelter from the wind and rain and plenty to eat. They like Butterflies uh, uh, flying high. They don't like places without wind. That's what different. I like people more. He wants to give food to friends. His friends like human food. They like human food, but don't want to live in the city. There's some pretty fickle cats. Uh, he wants to bring friends inside. Use food, bring them inside. Convince cats to come inside with food. That actually might do the trick. But if we bring all those cats over here from outside, will Furball Fortress be able to handle it? If this place was really filled to the brim with all kinds of cats, Valerina would be very happy. But the funds might... Cats are good, food, food good, hungry bad. I will help. Anyway, we should make sure that the cats are fed first. Yeah, no matter what, we should take care of delivering the food before anything else. If only we could convince them to come live in the city. And we need to explain things to Valerina. Uh, that's right, after all the cost of running this verbal fortress are coming right out of her pocket. Razor, how are you? How are the cats outside the city doing right now? Past few days, both brought food to friends. Now they're not hungry. You know, that's a relief. Now that we don't have to worry about the cats suffering from hunger, Pains while we speak, we can go discuss this ballerina. Thank you, Lupco. When with you, no need to worry. Now, this may be long. No need to tremble before the princessing. You have done well indeed to care for these cats, cat familiars, flawlessly even. Keep up the fine work. As the princessing of uh, the Verutalang. I shall remain here for a bit longer, reading the poetry of the soul of these fed flying familiars. Uh, Your Royal Highness, the Princess in the Vildalon, how proceeded thy reading? Yeah, famous curse too. How are you? How are you getting along with the cats? Did you find any special ones? Hmm. He has. Just be a few short days, merely a snap of the fingers. However, in our promise in the line retainers are yet deep in preparation to display their prodigious capabilities before my royal person. Only this creature with the name most humble has as though it was seeking to actively conceal its unique talents, its tope, has dared to respond to my tests, and has proven relatively cooperative. Praise worth indeed. Wait, so the other cats just gave you the cold shoulder because they couldn't understand your unique way of speaking? And only Dope is usually willing to spend time with you? No surprise. Uh, Blathemus Slender, how could that be? Uh, such topics are unworthy of further examination. Cat conjurers, 
the time has come for you to demonstrate your wisdom and offer up uh, your counsel to my August person. I am sure that this, that by this time you have long since gained deep insight into all the habits and favorite rituals fancied by the flying familiars here within the purple fortress. Oh, so you just wanted to ask what the cats, cats like to eat? That's an easy one. You are you sure are quick study? The moment you notice the cats ignoring you, you immediately plan on using food to get close to them. Uh, classic strategy, most wise, my princessing. You describe a food preference to several of several cats issue. As expected, such an intricate formulation could surely only be mastered by you, my catch conjurers. Most clever. It was just fish every time. Any meat. Uh, to discern the potential of each of these feline retainers, I, the possessing, must also reveal a suitable skill amongst my talents and numbers. And show this cat the word. Good luck, fish show. Well, remember to exercise portion control. Even if it's their favorite foods, cats can't eat too much. Don't let them pick out your always food. <laughs> Paimon is there. Hey, why are you looking at Paimon like that? Paimon always orders what she likes and finishes every morsel. She'll never waste a crumb. At least Paimon doesn't think she's ever wasted anything. As for picking out, Paimon may sometimes eat a bit more than usual, but that can really count as picking out. And the other. How has Oz been lately? Oh right, what's Oz been up to while you're, you've been playing with the Furball Fortress? Is he just waiting by the door? Or did he go outside the city by himself? Could that be dangerous for him? Can they just go as far as they want from each other? Oh, do not jest. This is Oz we speak of. Osvaldo uh, Navins, I don't know. The being who reigns supreme over three universes. Surely you are not concerned for his safety? Hardly necessary, I do say. Even a hundred paces, a thousand paces, any harboring treasures in taint would be overwhelmed and overawed by the mysterious depths of his gaze. They would never dare to act rashly. In our journey through the ages, it is inevitable that Oz and I will sometimes act separately. When Oz is not in his place by my side, he prefers peace and quiet, and will actively conceal his person rather than chat with mortals. Simply by observing the blessed surface of a lake, Oz can sift through millions upon millions of memories, and from them allow entirely new philosophies yet undreamed of to bubble up. This is one of his favorite pastimes. I will think she gets it. He should be by Cedar Lake right now, somewhere we can see, resting and enjoying the breeze. So does that mean we we can find him or that you we won't be able to see him anyway? So, do you get to have fun in the Furball Fortress while Oz gets to treat himself? Uh, resting the way he likes seems like a good deal for all. Very good indeed. Congratulations on your order. Naturally, I, the princess in the Veruta Lung, uh, cannot long linger here in this Furball Fortress, for the pressing matters of many different worlds await the attention of Oz and myself. Next time I see you too, my good cat conjurers, I shall surely, surely have sought out a cat familiar who fears not us, my uh, majesty. And I don't think there's anybody here with you. Uh, do you have something new to say? Nobody the cats? What is you catch? Which cat did it change? No. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay, so in the other one, nothing as well. Uh, there is no hurry. Okay. Yeah, that's a bit fast, and there wasn't really much to do afterwards. Completed. 
Ah, another the cat's meow. Perhaps you'll be able to make some new friends. Ah, a giant cat, orange cat seems to have a bit of temper. Do you scarf in the senior or whatever? Because it's a pulse lodge. Ah, but it's a caution. Impressively fun. Okay. Rewards. Uh, complete furnishing and get uh, cherished. No, damn it. Oh, okay, so we got that. Turn of me over. Hmm, don't really care much about that. Over there. Hmm, okay. Peace prevails. Uh, how long for this two? Eight days still. Okay, I'm not gonna spend wishes here. Oh, I have one. Okay. Okay. So All that's it. Are made new. Yeah. Yes, I'm off. This is an auspicious era for humanity.